some of the questions that you want to ask yourself before you actually invest or buy a hotel um, is what kind of hotel do you want to buy? Um, meaning, you know, what there are so many different types of hotels. So you have economy, which is like your motel sixes or your super eights. You have your extended stay, which is I have two extended stay properties in my portfolio, Stay Bridge and Home Two Suites. I'm a co-owner of those two particular hotels. So those are extended stay. Extended stay are hotels that have like a kitchenette. Um, they're designed more for folks who want to stay a little bit longer, right? Um, do you want to do full service, meaning a hotel with a lot of, you know, meeting space and a spa and amenities? Those are a little bit more expensive. But if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Um, so just think of the, the kind of hotel that you actually want to get involved. When do you when do you plan to invest? This is a question that you want to ask yourself, right? So can you invest today or can you invest next year, right? Do you want to own today or do you want to own next year? Be realistic with yourself because hotels are very capital intensive projects. Um, my hotel was on a smaller end in Oklahoma. We paid 8.3 million for it. And that's on a smaller end. That's on the smaller side, right? Um, the hotels that we just acquired, the, I just acquired a two hotel portfolio in Indiana. Uh, it was about an $18 million deal. Those hotels were on a smaller side. So again, I'm saying it so calmly because I'm in this space and those numbers are small, but to some folks, they're like, whoa, that is large. So I'm saying this to say, you want to think about this. Partnerships are key. Every, I've yet to see a hotel with no partners or with no investors. I've yet to see it. I've even seen billionaires, billionaires partner with folks on their hotel projects. So that's what it's all about. So I'm glad you brought that up, Beecher, about partnerships. Partnerships are key, right? That's another question you want to ask yourself. You know, who do you want to partner if you want to partner? Because structuring will be a little different. Some people just don't want to partner. Hey, that's cool with them. I have one of my investors. They're branching off and they're about to buy their own hotel. They don't want to partner with anybody. They just want to do a husband and wife thing. Hey, that's cool. I'm glad you know who you are so we can figure this out together, right? Also think about where do you plan to invest? This, this is key, right? So for my folks who in New England, for my folks who in California, uh, think about where you want to invest, right? You know, do you want to buy or acquire near? Do you want to go international? These are questions that you want to ask yourself. So how do you, I'll, I'll answer that at the end. Remind me at the end for Q&A. Um, why are you investing? These are the things, and it's in the next, I see the question as far as could the land be used as collateral? We'll talk about that. Uh-oh, look, uh-oh, uh look, Janet, you see this? Earn your leisure group hotel. Like that, yes. that's, hey, that's a good idea. So think about why are you investing? Are you a cash flow person or are you an equity person? Because that's gonna, that's gonna play a huge role on your, your strategy right? Because if you're a cash flow person, then you need to look at hotels like Motel 6. You need to look at hotels like Super 8. Now, when you sell it, you're not going to get a lot when you sell it. But during that time that you have it, you're going to, meaning you're not going to get a lot of equity built in, right? Um, but Super 8s, Motel 6s, those are great cash flow properties. So for my folks who coming in from multifamily or for my folks who coming in from, hey, look, I, you see this chat? Janet with this EYO. Oh, okay. You I may, do. May, you may want to tell MG on this one. Mm -hmm. Um, so for my folks, depending on how you want to structure it, then or or your your investment appetite, right? I'm more of an equity person. So I'm more of a long-term person, right? So you're really not gonna get a lot of cash flow with certain brands, but you're gonna get a lot of the when you sell it you're going to get a lot of money when you sell it because you're more of an equity person, right? So again, it just goes off on your strategy, right? So typically what I would recommend for folks who want to grow and get to want to buy a W one day or want to buy four seasons one day, I would say, hey, start off with a super eight, build your cash flow, build your portfolio up, and then you can grow and get to there, right? So those are some of the things that you want to think about. Why are you investing? Are you investing or buying? Because you're really not thinking about the money right now. This is something for future generations. So then you're more of an equity person. 
But if you're a cash flow person and you want to live and grow off of this, definitely, definitely get cash flow, Moto 6, Super 8, Days In. How are you going to invest, right? So are you going to use your life insurance to invest? Are you going to use your retirement? You know, are you going to do group economics where y'all all come together? I keep folks, I keep hearing folks talking about business credit. Are you going to figure out how to get this line of credit? You know what I mean? It's so many different ways that you can use that to invest or buy a hotel, right? Because if you get 10 people at 100,000, you got a million, that's 20% that you could put down on a $5 million hotel, right? So there are a lot of different things and strategies that you can do. Um, but, and of course you have to run and the numbers have to make sense, right? So the numbers have to make sense um you know based off the based off your strategy so here's some ways that you can raise capital like i mentioned before lines of credit uh savings retirement life insurance equity crowdfunding now i will recommend hotels are more of a longer term strategy this is not a get rich quick is that is not gonna happen i'm saying that right there right now okay so I recommend for folks who want to invest, this is funds that you're not thinking about. That's why I recommend folks to use their retirement to invest in hotels because it's just, a, it's a part of your portfolio. It's not immediate cash. I don't recommend folks to use their immediate cash to invest in hotels because you're not going to get your money back immediately. Okay, so it's some different ways that you can actually invest in a hotel passively. You can go to crowdfunding route. There are different crowdfunding websites that you can use. Uh, REIT stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. You can invest in um, hotels that way. You get quarterly. Well, I don't know how you often get the div dividends, but you do get dividends. Those questions that I just mentioned, you can use that when you're thinking about which route you should go. Um, there are 18 different REITs, lodging REITs that you can look into. Um, private investing, uh, meaning you can just invest directly. So that's something that that's my investors, they will be considered private yeah. investors. Hotel syndication, that's more of a direct risk, direct approach. You're more of the active investor. So I'm considered a hotel syndicator. I'm helping putting the deal together and raising capital, getting out, doing the dirty work. So this is the acquisition process, okay? This is just really high level, like high, like extremely high level. We just talked about the investment criteria, meaning the questions that you want to ask. The next thing you want to do, you want to assemble your team, Right. So you want to bring on a hotel broker, a broker who works on hotels specifically. That is so important, uh, especially on your first deal, because you don't want to have one person that know, don't know about hotels and another person that know about hotels. You got the blind leading the blind. Like you're trying to get to the closing table and you're not trying to waste any money, right? So you definitely want somebody on your team who has experience. So definitely working with the hotel broker. Uh, I would actually start off with finding a hotel consultant, somebody that can help you run the numbers. Somebody can help you just with the entire process, you know, helping you find the hotel, connecting you with the broker. Um, that'll be a good way. Finding hotels. So I had somebody had a question as far as how do you find a hotel? So you can go to, I'm putting in a chat, loopnet.com. That's the good one that you can find hotels, loopnet.com. Uh, Craigsy is another, another place that you can, uh, craigsy.com. That is a, a great way to find hotels. 10X is an auction site. But if you just if you just find hotel brokers, brokers who specifically sell hotels, then uh, that's a good way to find deals as well. Um, so after you find your hotel and you run your numbers, do your due diligence, see if it makes sense, do your, your market, um, do your market analysis. The next thing you think, next thing you want to do is you want to submit your park, uh, your offer. Right. So if you submit your offer and your offer is accepted, then the next thing you want to do, you want to go through, you want to do your due diligence on a property. Right. So that's when you get your appraisals done. Um, this is the part where you're going through the brand approval process. If you're going with the brand hotel brand, then you have to uh, apply to become a franchisee. Yes. When you're buying into those type of hotels, you're becoming a franchisee. So you have to get approved. Right. Uh, oh, that's a good strategy. Fourplex first hotel. That's a different strategy. Resorts, it's the same method. Um, with resorts, are more expensive. Um, so definitely you want to get a consultant with a resort because it's expensive. If you want to own, if you just want to invest, you just have to, you know, find going, going through REITs or finding someone that's buying a resort and they're looking for investors. 
Um, so after you go through the due diligence process, then that's when you transition changing keys from old owner to, to new owner.